from Rimit University, a Master of Clinical Psychology from Okan University, and the Master of Narrative Therapy from University of Melbourne, and a PhD in Counseling Psychology from Marmara University. Uh, our session will last for one hour. 40 minutes will be for our esteemed speaker, 15 minutes for your questions. Please kindly mute your microphones, open your cameras if possible, and add your country to your name. Without further ado, I would like to give the floor to Dr. Mahmoud to uh, deliver his presentation. Dr. Mahmoud, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Ahmed. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Greetings from Istanbul, Turkey. Uh, I am in the center of uh, Green Crescent Society. I am in the main head office of Green Crescent Society. Uh, inshallah, I hope you will come to Turkey and we will have an opportunity to host you here in the near future. Uh, before we start, I would like to give a very important, very uh, good definition of dependence and addiction. It says to be dependent means to cease believing in oneself. To depend means to stop dreaming. And the second one is the richest man is not the one who has the most, but it is the one who needs the least. So when you depend on something, it means that you already stop believing in yourself. And also you stop dreaming. You uh, lost something from your hopes, from your energy, from your motivation, from so many things about yourself. So being dependent is a very important result in our lives. So we need to take it seriously. As you listen other distinguished speakers about other kind of addictions, uh, I would like to talk today about gaming and internet addiction, which is important as much as like the others. Uh, I, I emphasize this point because when you say something about addiction, most of the time people think about chemical addictions. Chemical addictions means tobacco, alcohol, heroin, kind of substance abuse kind of thing, substance addiction. But um, when, you, when we talk about addiction, we also remember that we also consider that there are part, other parts of addictions as well, which we call it uh, behavioral addictions. But unfortunately, uh, people mostly all around the world underestimate behavioral addictions. Therefore, uh, behavioral addiction for so many years has been under identified, under treated, and under studied. For example, uh, when you say behavioral addiction, people remember gambling addiction, which you will hear uh, another important lecture tomorrow about gambling addiction. Gambling addiction was first mentioned in the medical lit literature in the early 18th century. However, it couldn't find a place in DSM until 1980s. It is not recognized until 1980s. And still, it does not work very well. There are not so many research on gambling addiction. Fortunately, uh, for the last 10 years, because of the internet and gaming, gaming addiction, uh, there is a very big awareness uh, raised all around the world about behavioral addiction. However, still very big gap we have about behavioral addiction area. Uh, for example, there is a very important problem about lack of public recognition. Most of the time, people all around the world don't take it seriously when you say something about behavioral addiction. They are so serious about chemical addictions and they are so cautious about everything on chemical addictions and their families. But when you say something about behavioral addiction, they say that uh, it is a kind of bad habit. It's not so important. If you, if you find a work, he, it will pass. If you send him to the military service, it will pass. If you marry him with someone, it will pass. It is, not, uh, it is not like a disease, it is like a habit people understand. And it is, in fact, it, because it is disease, most of the time 
people don't take it uh, important to send uh, people who suffer from behavioral addiction to the hospital to the treatment. And also there is a lack of research, unfortunately. For example, as a Green Crescent Society, we publish a bibliography on chemical addictions and uh, behavioral addiction in Turkey. Our chemical addiction bibliography is like this, but our behavioral addiction bibliography is like this because not, there are not so many research on this area. Another important point, there is a lack of publication uh, on as a book, as an article, as a brochure, as a online, uh, online videos kind of things. And because of that, people cannot get uh, accurate information, cannot get enough information about this area. On the other hand, there are so many uh, publications on chemical addictions and people can easily access to something on uh, chemical addictions, but it is not that easy to get, get uh, accurate information on behavioral addiction. And also another very big problem is there is a lack of experts who work on behavioral addiction. For example, if someone who suffer from behavioral addiction, who we, who we can get help to uh, access treatment, to get more information, to get accurate information. Another very big important is lack of expert. And also there is a lack of treatment program as well. For example, when you talk about uh, chemical addictions all around the world, there are hospitals, there are uh, models, treatment plan programs, kind of things. And there are so many research on that treatment programs. But unfortunately, uh, there is not at all, not, not a single one uh, scientifically proven uh, treatment model on behavioral addiction. It's a very big problem. Everyone tried to do something, but none of them is scientifically proven. So another important point is uh, there is a lack of treatment model and program. And also uh, related to this, there is lack of speci specialized institutions. For example, in Turkey, if, uh, if anyone suffer from uh, chemical addictions, all around to Turkey, there are so many facilities, so many institutions. But when someone suffer from behavioral addiction, there are just a couple of institutions, there are just a couple, couple of centers to get help from. And also there is a lack of law regulation as well. Uh, in chemical addictions, there are very specific laws, there are so many regulations, there are so many ideas kind of things, but when you talk about behavioral addiction, unfortunately, uh, the law regulation is coming so, so far, coming behind. Uh, recently, we had, uh, just last week, just last week, we had a very terrible experience about social media, and we see that how harmful uh, social media can be, how um, difficult to deal with social media's harm. So there has to be some specific uh, law regulation on that, but unfortunately we still don't have it. And also there is a lack of funding of, for research. When you do something, when you want to do something on chemical addictions, it is very easy to find a, a grant or a funding kind of things. But when you are trying to do something on behavioral addiction, Unfortunately, it is not so easy to get uh, be funded or to, to access grants because there are not so many grant opportunity to access with, to work with. Uh, of course, there are so many reasons for that. Uh, one, of, one of the important reason, uh, very important reason is, um, as you know, all around the world, there is a pop psychology. Uh, there is not a scientific research behind the pop psychology. They put some arguments and uh, just write whatever they want to write. And people don't take it seriously because of that. When you talk about behavioral addiction, we experience similar things uh, with pop psychology. Uh, for example, you may face with uh, so many um, popular magazine talk about love addiction. 
kind of things. It is not a real addiction, but this kind of magazines uh, just make up some kind of addictions and uh, people uh, see that, people face with that uh, fabricated addictions and don't take it seriously when you say something about uh, behavioral addiction. For example, uh, one of the uh, website, popular pop, pop psychology website, uh, make an alphabetic list uh, on behavioral addictions named more than 100 different addiction types. It is real, is it real? It is not real, but they are just making up because um, it is easy to talk about it when you talk about behavioral addiction. Therefore, this kind of categorization received many criticism with accusing of cre creation of fa false epidemics and creating diagnostic infla inflation. Uh, and people don't take, take, take it serious, seriously. But the problem is real. People suffer from behavioral addiction. And according to research, behavioral addiction have a big impact on low self-esteem, depression, anxiety, trauma, distress, conflict in marriage and family, poor academic and job per performance, and even suicide and homicide. And also the recent research shows that uh, it is almost same impact on our brain with chemical addictions when you have addicted to some uh, specific behaviors. Uh, the good news is uh, there is, a, as I said, there is a big awareness on behavioral addiction recently, and there are so many publication uh, and research on behavioral addiction in the last 10 years, fortunately. So when we talk about behavioral addiction, what we are really talking about, what are the real behavioral addictions? Uh, I just want to give you the most known and most uh, research one as a behavioral addiction. For example, the most famous one is a gambling addiction, sex addictions, shopping addiction, sport addiction, work addiction, and also online addictions. When we talk about online addiction, we talk about online gaming addiction, online gambling addiction, online sex addiction, online shopping addiction, online sport addiction, online social media addiction, online work addiction. So in fact, when you talk about online addiction, just online addiction can cover all other behavioral addictions as well. So online addiction is the most dangerous behavioral addiction because it is, uh, it is covering so many other behavioral addiction as well. And the problem is real. Let me give you some examples from different countries. For example, in 2001, the murdering his own brother by a middle school student, mimicking a scene from an internet online games. In 2005, a boy jumped off from building after, after being forced to exit the league by the game manager. In 2007, another boy learned how to commit murder and conceal the body from computer games. In 2010, heading to internet cafe without a billing after murdering the mother for being annoying. There are just a couple of examples. You can remember some others as well from your own context, from your own country. And the number increasing, there are more and more examples from all around the world about people who suffer and commit crime because of the behavioral addictions. So we need to take it so seriously. It is so important, so common, so widespread all around the world and we are already late to work against behavioral addictions, online addictions. What we know about online addictions, the prevalence of internet addiction was suggested to sharply increase among both young people and adults for the past five years. Consultation cases with problems associated with internet and treatment seekers with gaming disorder have sharply increased for the past five years. And also uh, the very important point in that, that uh, point, uh, the problem is not just a person. 
the problem is society, the problem is the modern lifestyle. Because the compulsion we feel around our devices is not simply the result of poor time management or lack of discipline. The problem is something else. For example, children now spend less time outdoors than a prison inmate. Think about a, prison, a prisoner in the prison. They have more opportunity, more time to spend outdoor than children. Children prefer to spend less time outdoor because they are busy with other things. And also there is not so many opportunities in big cities. So the problem is not just about a person, a pe pe on, about people, about people's characteristic psychological problems. It is mostly about the society we, we are building now, mostly the cities we live in now, the lifestyle we are living in. So when you talk about behavioral addiction, we have to talk about the environment, the society, the social factor as well. I don't want to talk about criteria uh, because um, it is easy to find and I don't want to waste your time with the criteria. But uh, I just want to uh, give you some generic risk factors that may, may facilitate online addiction. For example, access is very common factor for being addicted to online addiction. Because when you, especially in big cities, when you want to do sports, it is very difficult to access the play area, playground kind of things. But when you change the room in your home, it is very easy to access everywhere, everywhere, every game, all around the world. And also affordability, especially in big cities, if you want to see them, if you want to do some sport, you have to pay for something. If you don't have to pay, you have to pay for the transportation. But when you talk about the internet connection, it is a um, kind of cheap, cheaper than the real life opportunities. And also being uh, uh, an anonym, anonymity is very important factor uh, for uh, people who um, abuse internet and online uh, things. And also this inhibition, escape, social acceptability, and other factors for uh, people who abuse internet online addictions. There are so many important research on neurology, uh, neurological effect uh, on us uh, we experience from online addictions, but I don't wanna uh, talk about them, but we, I can say that um, the, the, the consequences of uh, online addictions is so harmful on our body, our psychological development, our social development, our uh, cognitive development, and also our moral development as well. And we cannot have a luxury to underestimate these consequences. I just want to give you how the problem uh, is, how, how big is the problem? Uh, I just want to give you some statistics. Uh, according to Statista, the number of active gamers world, worldwide will rise to more than 2.7 billion in 2021 up from 1.8 billion in 2014 and 2.3 billion in 2018. I'm not sure about after coronavirus, how uh, sharply increase online gamers, the number of online gamers. When billions of people around the world are playing games, even a small percent of problematic gamers can lead to a large population, literally tens of millions. Some people think that uh, what's wrong with gaming online? It is like a real uh, gaming. Uh, the problem is not just gaming. The problem is about two things. First one, uh, you can be addicted to online gaming. And when you become addicted, you have so many possible harmful consequences of this addiction on your whole development. And also the second one, when you become online addicted, online gaming addicted, 
you can easily become online gambling addicted, online pornography addicted, and some others as well. Because we have a, a strong evidence on the link, clear link between online gaming and online gambling. When you spend so much time on online gaming, after a while, you become a, an addicted to online gambling as well. And the gambling industry has a strong um, push on online gaming to make people, especially young people, addicted to gambling because they are sure that the young generation don't prefer to go to the casinos to play gambling. So gambling industry knows that they can easily reach young people on online gaming and become easily addicted. To, they can easily make them addicted to online gambling in the early years. When someone become addicted in early years, it is very difficult to treat them because uh, early years addiction changed so many things on your brain and um, they uh, cause so many missing years in your life. If you have a question, I will talk about uh, this uh, problem more, but I just want to give you some other uh, consequences of uh, internet addiction. There is a growing evidence base, for example, that leaks, links Excess, excessive gaming and use of internet to anxiety and depression, physical health problems, school disconnection, this decreased job productivity and unemployment, and social isolation. And also, epidemiological studies to date have shown that young populations are particularly at risk with reported prevalence rates of problematic use of games and online social networking sites as high as 8%, which is a very big number. Mobile, mobile gaming is part of daily lives of more than one third Indians. 40% men and 35% women play mobile games at least five days a week. 1.2% reported pathological gambling along with the presence of behavioral addiction. And unfortunately, only 0.3% of the participants reported the need to change gambling behaviors. Online addictions are so resistant to treatment, to accept, accept, to accept the problem. Significant positive relationship between the internet gaming and depression, anxiety, and stress. And as I said, uh, the problem is real and all around the world. I just give you some numbers from uh, India. Let me to give you some numbers from China. In December 2017, there were 583 million online gamers, gaming game players in mainline China. And according to, according to research, uh, uh, the addicted people rates is 3.5 to 17 percent of uh, gamers, which is, as I said, very big number. Data published in Chinese also suggests that familial, scholastic, and social factors could play a pivotal role in the onset and maintenance of uh, problematic online games. And as I said, there is a very big, uh, very close link between gaming and gambling. According to research, uh, which came from surveys of more than 7,400 game gamers, established a significant relationship between problem gaming and loot boxes. They also warned that the features used in popularity titles such as Rocket League and Overwatch may well be acting as a get gateway to problem gambling. Loot boxes appear in games is rated appropriate for three year old and above, and it is estimated that 30 billion has spent on them in 2018. As you can see, there is a very big industry 
behind the online gaming, online gambling, online pornography, and they are working so hard to make more and more people, especially young people, addicted to gaming, gambling, and pornography because there is a direct link between them. When you make some young people addicted to online gaming, it is much more easier to make them addicted to gambling and pornography and other problematic things. And also, um, uh, I just uh, want to remind you a picture of people uh, who are the CEOs of smoking companies raise their hand and swear on God um, about how harmless of smoking. You may remember that picture, the, the, a couple of CEOs um, try to prove people, try to persuade people about how, how harmless the smoking. And in 1950s, there are so many big advertisements about smoking, and they use doctors. And uh, the, uh, if you just Google about this advertisement, you can easily find them on the internet. Uh, and uh, according to that advertisement, they say more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. And there are some other pictures, doctor's pictures, Say that smoke a fresh cigarette. And according to that advertisement, smoking is good for your health. And they use that advertisement for so many years until a point people don't believe it, be, believe in them anymore. So uh, when I saw that advertisement, I remember a gaming advertisement today. Uh, in gaming, uh, gaming industry, try to appreciate people about how can be benefit how, how gaming can be beneficial for young people for their development but in fact it is not uh, very different than smoking maybe uh, heroin or maybe other things in at this point i want to uh, get your attention to one very important point i'm not sure how familiar uh, about the history of Green Crescent. But the root of Green Crescent uh, based on uh, colonization and addiction. When Istanbul was invaded in 1920s, colonizers deliver free alcohol to young people. And a group of scholars realized the harm, the problem, the, uh, the possible consequences of a young generation become addicted. And they establish Green Crescent. It is the 100 years uh, uh, of uh, anniversary this year of Green Crescent. 100 years ago, they established an NGO to fight against addictions, to prevent addictions. Uh, when they did that, when the colonizers inv invade Istanbul, and start to deliver free alcohol to young people. Uh, today's world, there are still so heavy, colonization still so heavy, but they change their directions. They don't invade land anymore. They don't invade buildings anymore. They don't inv invade farms anymore. Instead of invading lands, they invade our minds, they invade our hearts, they invade our skills, our capabilities, our uh, hopes, our dreams, our future plans, our powers, our life, our years, our time. They invade by online gaming, online ga gambling, online pornography. And unfortunately, according to so many research, young people spending so much time on gaming, gambling, pornography, and they are heavily affected by this addiction. And we pay very heavy prices because of these online addictions. I just 
uh, have a look at my notes if I want to say something more about that. So what we need, we, we need to do now, we need to work on more legislation and regulation on online addiction in our country. We need to work hard about that. For example, in Turkey, what we experience, when you talk about uh, on uh, legislation or regulation of internet, social media, and other uh, addictive type of uh, online things, uh, there is a very big campaign um, all around the country about free speech and human rights. But in fact, uh, misusing of online everything, online gaming, online gambling, social media kind of things, it is uh, the very big uh, problem about human rights and free speech. There are so many bullying issues, cyber bullying all around the internet and so many people um, heavily affected by this. But uh, when you talk about uh, something with human rights, people need to take a position besides you. But in fact, we need to work on more legislation and regulation. If we are on research area, if we are on academy area, we can do more research in our countries. And we need to do more public advocacy to raise awareness about um, online addictions. Uh, if we talk about the level of um, service for people we need to provide, we need to provide a service. We need to focus on uh, some points about children. For example, when you talk about preschool ch children, we need to talk about how we can reduce the supply. We need to focus on supply redu reduction for preschool children. When you talk about school children, primary school children or middle school children, we can focus on demand reduction for school children. When we talk about teenagers and adults, we need to focus on harm reduction. But if we can focus on supply reduction in preschool children, and if we can focus on demand reduction for school children, we don't have to do so many things on harm reduction when they become older, become adult. So supply and demand reduction is so important uh, on online uh, addiction, and then we need to focus on harm reduction. That's all from me now, and uh, thank you for your patience. I am so open to every question you want to ask on online addictions. If I know the answer, I can give you the answer. If I don't know the answer, I can easily say that I don't know the answer. Thank you, Dr. Mahmoud, for the nice and fruitful lecture. Indeed, raising awareness on the challenges posed by new technology tools is always necessary and beneficial for youth. And we should all work together on this phenomena to ensure that youth are using new technology tools responsibly and uh, productively. Uh, for the question answer session, I would like to start with uh, one very important question that was sent by the audience. Uh, what are the criteria for using technology? When does the problem begin to occur? Um, there are so many research on that, but Recently, uh, two years ago, ICD published a, a criteria for gaming and gambling addiction. Mm -hmm. uh, there are three criteria on that issue. First one, impaired, con impaired control over gaming and or gambling. The second one, increasing priority given to gambling or gaming over other activities to the extent that gambling or gaming takes precedence over inter other interests and daily activities. And the third one, continuation or escalation of gambling or gaming despite the occurrence of negative consequences. And they have to uh, experience, they have to be experienced at least 12 months. So it is officially, scientifically recognized by WHO, and it will be published in ICD-11. So we can easily say that uh, gaming and gambling 
addiction is accepted are accepted as a an addiction illness uh, there are not some others like online pornography social media not because we don't suffer from these addictions who says that uh, we cannot publish social media and online pornography as an illness in icd because we don't have enough research now when we have enough research we can put them uh, on icd 11 or 12 uh, but in today we don't have enough research evidence work on that problems not because we don't experience we don't suffer from that problems thank you Hujang. Uh, now I would like to give the floor to Ahmed Ben uh, Dawia from Morocco. Ahmed, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, awesome present uh, speech about uh, addiction. I really liked the, the relation that you have made up uh, between the gambling and the, the video games. I'd just like uh, to add, and I have a question at last, it's that uh, uh, actually, uh, Playing games itself became a, a way of gambling because I know some or some of my friends or in my family, some teenagers that put their money in in the games. They they waste uh, uh, over it's uh, ten or twenty dollars by by week. It's it's really a lot. Just uh, in order to to shop or the shipping and the guys who play in video games they will, they will know what i'm talking about uh, what i'm what my question is that if we don't uh, have the ability or the capability to defeat this problem of addiction to the to the video games why not we don't create other choices for these uh, teenagers or these uh, people who who are with uh, addicted to video games for example, there is a, there is a kind of uh, video games. It's called edu uh, educational uh, video games, or uh, uh, it's, it's educational video games. It's really important for our behaviors, uh, for children, kids, or even for teenagers, or for us also. Uh, we we know a lot of we we learn a lot of things by the by this kind of uh, or type of uh, video games. I don't know why the organizations that want to 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 defeat problem of addiction why they don't give uh, this uh, this uh, this importance to to that kind or that type of uh, of video games and thank you for your time thank you ahmed for your question and you are so true about even in the gaming children uh, has to pay so much to to stay in the gaming and also uh, the gambling the gambling industry put so many instruments in gaming itself not as a gambling site uh, there are so many instruments in g very popular games as a gambling so it is very true thank you for your remind um, the second point which is so important for me as well your question as a green crescent our standpoint is not being against internet and other uh, digital technologies. Our standing point is two things. First one, uh, using technology for our development, not against our development. For, for our social connection, not for our social disconnection. For our future, uh, to make our future more bright, not more dark. So, we can use it uh, for ourselves, not against ourselves. But uh, we have to develop a culture all around the world as a using online technologies in a good way and providing good opportunities, good alter alternatives for young people. Uh, there are some research, especially from UK, children, uh, from 8 to 12, 82% uh, of them face with uh, heavy pornographic materials without searching for them. Just from when they, uh, were, they spend some time on the internet, the industry put 
something together, childish something together in front of them to make them uh, early addicted per people because they are, they are more vulnerable. So for young people, for children, there are so many negative alternatives on online world. We need to provide positive alternatives. We need to provide, we need to establish a, a good culture, a right culture to use internet for our life, for our development, for our relationship. But we need to focus on this culture together because the industry are so rich, so powerful, so committed, so dedicated to establish a world according to their rules. So we have to, as committed as them, as powerful as them, as become, becoming together, uh, to provide a safer, a useful alternative of online digital world. And second one, I am a clinician. I'm a clinical psychologist and I work with online addicted people. And in some point, if it is very, it is impossible or very difficult to make people use internet in moderation. So for, because for some people it's impossible. Uh, they spent their whole life on the internet. If they are 20 years old, uh, they spent at least 15 years of their life on the internet. So it is impossible for them to live outside world, to live real world. What, how we can help them? We help them by developing positive addiction. Positive addiction. What, what is positive addiction? Using internet as an addicted person, as much as like addicted person, but in a positive way, in a good way, in a useful way, helping someone or developing something or finding something, doing research or developing a program. You can use internet like 10, 10 hours a day, 15 hours a day, like an addicted per people. But if you use this internet to develop something, to produce something, it is positive addiction. Okay, at least you can do that. If you cannot uh, live in the real world, you want to live in a digital world, just live in digital world, but don't waste your life. Don't waste your skills. Don't waste uh, your opportunities. Do something for your life, even in your digital life. So we try to help them by developing positive addiction for that people. Thank you, John. Another question from uh, Suradi Ahsan from Ghana. Yeah, please. Uh, my question is, uh, I am somebody who is into gaming and uh, I would say I am addicted to it. So I have tried all my best to stop the gaming and it's not possible. So I would like advice from you. How do I go about it so that I can forfeit that gaming? And because always I am planning for myself that to maybe today I'm not gaining anything, tomorrow I'm going to gain and continuously I am getting into it deeper. So how do I go about it? And moreover, as a volunteer, a young boy, who is in a society where such things are predominant? How do I go about it to educate people around me, to change them, let them understand that such activity is nothing but leading you somewhere else? So I would like advice a lot. Thank you. Thank you for your, that question. It is, there are two very important questions. Uh, first one is how, what we can do if we are addicted to online gaming. Uh, as I said, online gaming is not as a bad habit, not just as a bad habit. It is illness. It is a very big problem. And like other illnesses, we cannot escape from that problem by just ourselves. It, not, it is not just willpower. It is very, very difficult, maybe impossible 
just uh, escaping by our decision. So we need to get help. We need to get help from our friends. We need to get help from our families. We need to get help from our culture. We need to get help from our religion. We need to get help from uh, professionals like doctors, psychologists. Otherwise, it is kind of impossible to deal just by yourself with that online addictions. Uh, the second one, how we can, uh, as far as I understand, how we can raise awareness about online addictions. Uh, I can say two things. First one, um, in Turkey, we develop uh, different programs uh, for public, uh, TBM, OBM, and also YEDAM, uh, for school children, for young people, for addicted people, for prevention program kind of thing. There are so many different programs to raise awareness and also to help people who are addicted or possible uh, risk group of addiction. So if you can uh, contact with our friends in Green Crescent, they can provide the program to you to copy uh, the program or to adapt the program in your countries. And also the second one, in, uh, as a Green Crescent, uh, we have a, a Green Crescent in eight countries. If you have Green Crescent in your country, you can work with them together. And uh, in, as an International Green Crescent Society, every year we provide a grant program. So if you develop a project to help your people in your country, uh, you can develop a project and you can apply for the grant program in International Green Crescent Federation, Federation of Green Crescents. If you don't have a Green Crescent in your country, you can apply to establish one in your country. Next question from uh, Mariam Al Balusi from Oman. Uh, thank you so much for your awesome presentation. My name is Marianne. Uh, I am from Oman. Uh, I have one question. There is a great potential for working remotely to increase um, due to the current crisis of COVID-19. And how dangerous or safe is this practice uh, in terms of online addiction? I know that you have already mentioned the positive addiction, but I am not sure how that blends well, mm -hmm. uh, how that blends with um uh, working remotely and, um, you know, practicing freelancing online. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that question, Mariam. Um, in, the, in the past, like five, 10 years ago, researchers in that area focus on timing. We, we are asked this kind of question so much. People ask to us, how many hours should I use internet to not become addicted? Or... Uh, how many hours a, a person should uh, use internet if they don't want to become addicted kind of questions. Uh, and uh, especially American Pedo 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 Pedological Society, uh, Psychological Society, uh, prepare a time limit for children, for adult kind of things. But during the time, we realize that it's not about time limit. So we can now, today, we cannot say a, a certain hour to use internet. What we can say uh, to understand if I am on the wrong way or right way, we just need to focus on what else I have in my life. What about my responsibility to our, my body? Every one of us has a responsibility to our bodies uh, as a sleep, for example, if you are an internet addict, addicted person, if you have a problem about internet addiction, most likely you don't have a regular sleep time or you sleep less than you need. Also about nutrition, about sports, uh, about psychology. We, we need to focus on psychological development. We need to focus on the social development. Uh, how, what, what I do in uh, my real life uh, about my responsibilities. If I, um, if I am okay with my responsibilities in our, if, my, if uh, I am okay with my 
real responsibilities in my real life, it's not so important how many hours I uh, spent on the internet. But if I don't uh, do my responsibilities in my real life, even two hours, three hours, it might be too much. Okay, next question from Abdul Latif Lawal from Nigeria. Yeah, uh, thank you for this wonderful section, sir. So um, uh, my question goes to, uh, is on um, uh, online gambling and the gambling generally. So um, in Nigeria, one of uh, uh, the trending things is now online gambling or yeah, generally online gambling. And, um, and there is a lawmaker who is even um, the founder of uh, one of the online gambling here in Nigeria. So it makes it difficult to even create a law that will stop the gambling. And it is now becoming enormous. At least um, nothing less than four out of 10 youths are into it right now. If you see 10 youths uh, working, then uh, most likely four of them are into uh, gambling. So um, what do we do, sir? How can we stop this? I have tried to, to mitigate it within my surrounding. And I could remember some of my friends some times ago um, even tried to attack me that um, each time I, I tried to tell them not to do it, I eventually, um, uh, they eventually lose the gaming. So probably I'm the one that is bringing the bad luck for them. So um, it is really a pathetic situation here. And um, I would really love to know um, what advice or how can we go about it? We, it will be very hard for us to eradicate it but um, we can mitigate it. So um, in what way can we mitigate it? Because um, um, some people have seen it as profession and um, it is not due to poverty because I have seen a lot of people who are into, who have, profession, who have professional work, some security agency, some bankers who are, or who are um, addicted to it. So um, uh, what can we do or how can we mitigate it in our country? Thank you, sir. Thank you, Abdul Latif. Um, thank you for your that question. It means that you are so worried about your people and your country and you want to do something, which is so important. Because as I said, the industry is so strong and they are so committed and they work together. Uh, they work in collaboration. So we need to do similar thing. We need to do something co in collaboration with local uh, networks and also we need to do something together uh, in international level. Um, it is very difficult to deal with the industry just by yourself. But if we make to, if we come together and uh, uh, bring our power together, do something in collaboration, we can do something even with with a small steps. Even at the beginning, we take small steps. Uh, during the time, it become bigger and bigger. Just uh, think about the Green Crescent. 100 years ago, there were just 20 people in invaded uh, Istanbul. The city was invaded. 20 people uh, thought, li like you, they, they think that they need to do something about that issue. And then they take uh, they take a step to do something against that problem. Uh, it starts with 20 people. Now in Turkey, we have more than 100,000 volunteers. And all around the world, we can reach with million people. So if you come together with people who want to do something about that problem in local and Inter, uh, international level, uh, there, I, I believe there are so many opportunities to do something. Thank you. Next question from uh, Isnaira Salim. Isnaira? We cannot we can, hear you. We cannot hear you, Isnaira. Okay. So I actually wrote my question just in case if you can hear me. Um, my question is that we are living in a pandemic caused by the corona and people 
turn online for their basic consumption because we are restricted socially. We are even advised to stay at home. Uh, Unfortunately, we couldn't hear you very well, Isnaira. So what's people saying? Education, work, transportation, and entertainment. Um, unfortunately, we, could, we couldn't hear you. Can you please write your question in the chat box? Mm -hmm. Okay. Please write it. Uh, I will ask another question from uh, the rich and sent question. Hujam, what are your suggestions concerning technology addiction to families and experts? A very big question. There are so many, so many uh, things I can say to families and experts. Mm -hmm. uh, but the most important thing, third, three things. First one. Uh, by the way, I published two articles. I'm not sure if I can send it here. Uh, I published two things, two, two pub pub publication, two articles, one of them working with a gaming addicted person, and the second one working with young people about digital lives of them. Uh, so if you can just read them, uh, you can see uh, my main uh, frame about working with people, uh, with young people. But uh, I can say three things. First one, being a good role model is so important. Uh, when you talk about online addiction, people think that, always think that it's something about young people and children. But what we see, old people, middle-aged people, uh, they are not so good at using digital technologies wisely. They spend so much time in gaming. They spend so much time in gambling. They spend so much time in WhatsApp or social media uh, networks kind of things. So uh, when a child came to the world, they have no idea about what is right, what is wrong, how they live in the world. We show them how to live the world. Adults show them how to live the world. So if adults every time stick with their phones, you doing something, uh, it means that they are not very good role model. If they don't have any life outside of the mobile technology, digital technologies and work, they are not very good role model. So as an adult, as a family, as a father, as a mother, as an expert, as a something in our society, someone in our society first, we need to show, we need to provide a good role model about using technology wisely. The second one, differentiate between the wise using and the harmful using. Because when children spend their time on the internet, not, they don't always uh, spend their time with uh, unnecessary things. Sometimes they are doing great things. Sometimes they are using uh, very important programs or websites. So we need to support them when they are using uh, internet online technologies wisely. Uh, and we need to help them to escape from using internet or digital technologies un un unwisely. Unfortunately, families put a position against all kinds of technologies. And when you say every time negative things about uh, online technologies, um, young people develop a reaction. And they don't want to listen to you anymore. They don't, you don't have any effect on them. So secondly, we need to uh, differentiate between the good using and the bad using, harmful and wise using, and we need to support the wise using of online addictions, online uh, technology. And the third one, providing real life opportunities for young people. If, uh, for example, young people mostly use internet for three things. First one, so uh, for com connection, communication. 
with their peers. If they don't have any opportunity in the real life to socialize with peers, they have to use mobile apps. So we need to provide a real life opportunities for young people to socialize with their peers. And the second thing, they need to spend their energy. Uh, that's why they use online gaming too much. If they have enough opportunity, if enough encouragement about spending their energy in, in real life, I guess they don't spend so much time on the net, but we need to provide them. And the third one, they want to be appreciated. They want to be seen, they want to be heard. If they don't be heard, they, they are unseen in real life. They want to be seen in digital lives and it is so easy to be seen here. You share something and, and you check 100 people like it and you like it being by being liked. So if there is a good communication, if a young person don't have a good communication with their parents, with their friends, with their environment, and if he is not seen, he wants to be seen in digital lives. So if you provide them being seen, being heard in real life, they don't need to be heard or see, be seen uh, visible in real uh, digital world. Thank you, Hojan. Uh, last question. How can we learn and teach to be technology literate? Uh, say it again. Uh, how can we learn and teach to be technology literate? Oh, okay. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know because it is a very big topic and um, I am uh, working on addiction, not the other way around, not um, uh, technology, um, technology education or technology uh, training. Mm -hmm. So I guess uh, you can read something about uh, this in the uh, on the books or on the website, but I'm not uh, that position to answer this question. Okay, Hajan. If you have still you have time, we will take a last question from okay. uh, Isnaira. Isnaira, okay. do you hear me? You can ask your question. You can't hear me. Okay. okay. So uh, unfortunately, I I couldn't get the question from uh, Isnaira. So thank you so much, uh, Hojan, for the productive uh, lecture. It was thank very you for helpful. having me. It Thank is a you. very big problem and I am so delighted to be with you uh, and to talk with you about this very real problem, this very important problem. I hope our meeting uh, help us to do something for our society, for our young people. Inshallah. And we are also looking forward to learning from you in other opportunities and uh, programs. Uh, also, I would like to thank our esteemed partner, Great Green Crescent, for their collaboration and cooperation to make this program fruitful and successful. Uh, also, I would like to thank uh, our youth and our participants for their global question and uh, input. Also, I would like to thank our, our colleagues, the ICYF technical team, for uh, their support. Uh, please, dear participants, don't forget to follow our page on social media and to apply for our next program. Thank you so much and see you tomorrow, inshallah, for other constructive lectures. Assalamu alaikum wa